This is the board account method. All right, in the board account method, each place on a ballot is assigned points. And an election with n candidates, so n number of candidates, we give one point for last place, two points for second uh, from last, and so on. Uh, the points for each candidate are tallied, and the candidate with the highest total is the winner. This candidate is called the Borda winner. All right, sometimes we're going to get a tie, and in that case, just assume that a tie can stand, and we're just going to have to use a different method uh, to determine a winner. The main advantage to this method is it's really good for taking into account voters' preferences other than just their first choice. Uh, because the winner is the candidate with the best average ranking uh, because of that, those weighted points. Uh, the winner is often a good compromise candidate. Okay, an example here. Uh, consider the election for the new principal at Washington Elementary School. The school board is going to hire one of four finalists. Ms. Uh, Amaro, Mr. Burr, Mr. Castro, and Mrs. Dunbar. Uh, the winner will be determined using the board account method. And um, you'll notice their last names, we just use A, B, C, and D. So now we're going to calculate this. Uh, first, let's look at, uh, oops, <laughs> first let's look at A. So A has six first place votes, so six. Now there are four candidates, so the last place person would get one point, and the first place person will get four points. So six times those four points plus two. Now notice that A is in last place, so two times one plus, uh, and then last place again right here, so three times one. Okay, and that's going to come out to be so it's 24 plus 2, uh, 26, 29. All right, uh, let's move on to B. So candidate B has six second place votes, so we're going to give that person three points plus uh, two first place votes, so two times four plus three third place votes, so we're going to give them two points. Okay. And that makes 32. Now we're going to move on to C. So C has six third place votes, so um, they're next to last, so they're only going to get two points for that. So six times two plus uh, they have two second place votes. So three points for that, and three first place votes, so three times four. And that is going to give us 30. Uh, the last one is D. So D has uh, six last place votes, so D is going to be six times only one point for that, plus uh, two third place votes votes, so two, and only two points for that, plus uh, three votes that put D in second place, so three points. Okay. And that's going to come out to be 19. So uh, for this example, it looks like our uh, winner is going to be B. So B is the winner. How do you think Ms. Amar Mrs. Uh, Amaro feels about the outcome? Um, probably pretty upset, maybe, if she was told that the plurality method was going to be used because she does have the most first place votes. So she would win plurality, but if we were using board account, uh, the B candidate is clearly the winner. And not only does she uh, have uh, the most first place votes. She actually has the majority of the most, uh, the majority of the first place votes. Uh, she has six, and that's six out of eleven. So that's more than half. Uh, so um, should have been a majority candidate. Still didn't win while using the uh, the board account method. 
Which brings us uh, back to our fairness criterion. Um, so from that example, we see that the board account method violates both the majority criterion and the Condorcet criterion. Despite its flaws, though, experts in voting theory consider it to be one of the best, if not the best, uh, method for deciding elections with many candidates, um, especially because it takes into consideration your second, third, fourth uh, choices, and so on. Uh, in the real world, a uh, board account method is actually used for deciding uh, certain elections like the Heisman Trophy winner, the NBA Rookie of the Year, NFL MVP, college football polls, and many other things. All right, another example here uh, using the board account method, who wins the election. Uh, so uh, let's list them off. So we have A, B, C, and D. And with candidate A, looks like we start off with six votes. Now, we can uh, number these. So remember, this is four, three, two, one, the amount of points for each spot. So A will receive uh, two points for being in third place, plus uh, three votes. Now, this time A is in second place, so three points, plus A is in first place. with five, five times, so five times the four point plus eight times uh, three points for second place. And that is going to come out to be 65. Okay, we're going to do the same thing for B. Uh, B has six times third place, or sorry, second place, so three points plus three. Uh, B has three third place, so two points, plus five times two for third place, and eight times last place, so only one for that. Okay, and that is going to come out to be 42. C has, uh, there are six people who put C in last, so only one point for C. Um... Three people put C in last place also, so only one point there. Five people thought C should be in second, so we're going to give three points that time. And then uh, eight people put C up top, so four points. And that is going to be 56 total. And I think I'm running out of room here. I'm going to actually do a uh, account for D up here. So D is we have six people who put it in first place, so four points, plus uh, three times four, plus five, this time D's in last, so only one point, and then eight people put D in third place, so only two points. And that is going to come out to be 57. So looking at our totals, it looks like uh, our winner our board of winner, winner is going to be candidate A. All right, last example question of this section. Um, an election is held among three candidates, A, B, and C, using the board account method. There are 20 voters. If candidate A received 37 points and candidate B received 39 points, okay, so these aren't votes, these are points, how many points did candidate C receive? So. Uh, first of all, we just need to figure out how many points total are available uh, to the candidates in the entire election. So uh, we have 20 voters, and let's think about that. Each voter is going to give six points um, in their vote because we have a first place vote with three points, we have a second place vote with two points, and a third place vote with one point. Okay. Um, so that 20 times 6 is going to give us 120. So that's the total amount of points. Now, we are already given that um, candidate A has 37, so we're going to subtract that. And we're also going to subtract the 39 points from candidate B. Okay, And whatever is left should be the amount of points that candidate C received. So that is going to be 44 points.